Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I'm here to talk a little about human rights and human trafficking in China and in the United States. And uh, so my take uh, that I have so far is what you might call only a beginner's take. Um, I became interested in China's annual reports on the United States uh, infringements of of human rights a few years ago and I was just looking over the most recent one uh, this mo this last month and I noticed uh, this is my praise <laughs> I noticed that uh, I think China states that America falls down in human rights with regard to uh, equal pay for women uh, discrimination against minorities and that to do with economics especially and also, as I recall, um, with regard to crime and violence in the streets and drug use and, and the drug trade and so forth. There may be other things, but, but I, my under, the st underlying understanding that I got from looking over that report was that in China, I feel, they greatly value uh, an orderly society, uh, a, a harmony in society and like that. And to, to my mind, it feels like they look aghast, A-G-H-A-S-T, did I spell it right? Aghast. Um, they look aghast at the disorderliness of, of the American people. And I will say that the people here, um, they're, they're very different in their social values from the people in China, apparently, the Chinese ideal of values. And uh, they value more the liberty to go exploring and figuring things out and, you know, making a way for themselves and so forth. They value their, their freedom to pursue their happiness and like that. To my mind, a natural consequence of this, this value of liberty and the pursuit of happiness is the disorderliness that we see in this society. Uh, we, in addition, we offer um, a chance for other people to, from other parts of the world, to become citizens. And so uh, that results in cultural diversity. And, um, And, and in some areas it results in discrimination because people who are all of a particular like race or culture like that are confronted with, suddenly sometimes confronted with people who, whose culture is very different or perhaps their, their characteristics, their physical characteristics are very different. And then there's like a commotion as the cultures become accustomed to each other. In the cosmopolitan areas it's different. Um, there, there's much more, um, what you would call, exposure to diversity, and so people don't react so much to diversity when they see it, unless you're in an area like South Central Los Angeles, where where everybody is uh, de colores, and and so then a white person comes in and they look very different. Caucasian looks very different. Or if you're in West LA, it's exact opposite, you know. So anyway, uh, we have here like a randomness, uh, um, a drive to individuality, the Horatio Alger story, and these create more, less harmony in a way, and but more tolerance for diversity in another way. All right. So, so, then I, th I thought, well, I'll just see what the United States has to say about um, human rights and so forth. So I checked out the CIA fact book, right? And there, there's a, a, like a section on countries, each country. And, and, and I especially looked up the United States first and then China, among others. And one of the things I found out is that the, the and there's a bottom section after government and so forth, there's a bottom section that has to do with in global problems that are f that some portion of them are faced by the particular country. So I looked up the United States because we all know about 
you know, the American government system already if we live in America. I looked up the bottom part, uh, which, which I couldn't quite fathom what it would be about, but, but what it said is that we in America, we're facing, and um, it said we're facing problems with the drug trade, and, um, the, but also it said problems with, with money laundering, which I'm not too clear on that concept. So uh, then I looked under China, and under China, the CIA fact book um, indicated as these sort of intertwined global problems, especially human trafficking human trafficking. So then I looked up a congressional report, a very recent congressional report on human trafficking. Very like horrifying report about tra human trafficking all around the world. And I uh, got a notion about what that entailed. And it has to do with, not just with um, children being sold for the sex work trade, but also children being sold into hazardous occupations that involve the use of chemicals that might be like damaging to the body and so forth. And sometimes children um, die because of their exposure to difficult work conditions and so forth. I'm not sure of the mortality rate. I didn't go into it that far. Um, so anyway, I was thinking this over quite a bit because here we have a conundrum. China is stating that the United States falls down on um, on human rights, and yet China is like a very um, big on human trafficking. And so I looked into human trafficking in China a little more and found out that there were a lot of Korean refugees that that pleaded to be um, admitted to China. And then in the CIA fact book for China, I found that China only allows people of Chinese descent or Chinese parentage to become Chinese citizens. It's a closed society. So, so China was faced with Koreans and other nationalities who are a different culture and a different, to them, a different, like, uh, race that from them who are, we might call illegal aliens, many illegal aliens entering their country and what to do with them because their government could not accommodate them. And so their decision, based on, I feel, their very high ideals of harmony and uh, in the world, harmonic relations, was to create a kind of indentured system, what we call human trafficking, to provide these people with like a, a basis of, of of work in the world in exchange for the most um, fundamental human needs, such as shelter, clothing, and food. All right. So, so, so I kept on thinking about this on the trip up this way to Ojai today. I kept thinking, where is the connection here? What is the story? You know, how, how could it be that two big countries, gigantic as far as geography is concerned, should both hold forth that they were the, the very, um, that their government offered the very best in human rights, and yet uh, each could accuse the other of being the very worst in human rights. It, it just didn't make any sense to me. And finally, I, I thought of the illegal alien situation here in California and in other parts of the United States and I realized that the situation that, that China faced with regard to the Korean immigrants and other nationalities was very similar to the situation that the United States faces with regard to the influx of illegal aliens from south of the border. So then I had to look at how is it that we treat these illegal aliens compared to how China treats hers? And I realized that in general we hunt them down and deport them if we can, you know, deport them back to their countries. Um, now, as to which system, uh, deportation or what's sometimes termed repatriation or um, human trafficking or some 
version of that, maybe a more lenient version of that, such as um, indentured servitude that was practiced for a limited term um, in order for a person to learn a skill or trade during the times of Benjamin Franklin in America, is the more like understanding or connecting with human rights, I don't know, you know. One is based on a, a very orderly uh, notion of civilization and human affairs. That's the Chinese. And the other is based on kind of a free-for-all, you know. Every man for himself in a way. Of course, we are very socialized now and we offer many socialized services to our citizens. But the big concern in recent years has been how could we possibly afford to offer these social socialized benefits to people that aren't contributing to our tax base. And I think that's a reasonable consideration. How can we stay afloat economically and still assimilate what was called in, in ages past the poor and huddled masses of the world? In those days, when, when we opened our doors to everyone, we had plenty of free land that needed settling. But now, our urban centers are very overpopulated and our social services are very overstretched. So the question is, what can we do? What can we do to do the best by these people that come knocking on our door? The most humane thing that we can do but at the same time, something that, that keeps our country afloat. You know what I mean? So, so there you have it. I think that the, the basis of the concern that both countries might have has to do with how to treat our illegal aliens.